Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I am going to be reviewing a finalist of the Hugo Award for Best Novella in the year 1968. So I'm trying to read through all of the Hugo Award winners and shortlisted finalists. According to the Wikipedia, Wikipedia article I have it pulled up right here. So the Wikipedia article shows the winners and the shortlisted finalists and I'm trying to read all of these for both the novel and the, the novella. So this one is the 1968 or is one of the 1968 finalists and I want to take some time to review it and that is Hawksville Station by Robert Silverberg. So this one um, was a finalist in the year 1968. The winners for this year were Riders of a Purple Wage by Philip Jose Farmer and uh, Wear Search by Anne McCaffrey. And it was a joint winner for those years. The other finalists were Star Pit by, The Star Pit by Samuel Delaney. We also had Damnation Alley by Roger, uh, what is it, Zelazny, and Hawksville Station. So this one by Robert Silverberg. This book that I read, this edition that I read, there is a note on the inside saying slightly longer than the original story which appeared in the magazine. So I'm assuming there's some minor changes that have been made to this particular copy that I'm reading versus the one that actually won the prize. So Hawksville Station takes place in the future, although as a modern reader it's not too distant future, it's uh, late 2020s. And in this, the government of the United States has changed a couple times, or at least there's been one major revolution, and political dissidents, people who are not um, conducive to the government's good running of society, are sent to a uh, political prisoner camp. But unlike most political prisoner camps, it's not in Siberia, it's not in the middle of, I don't know, North Dakota. The political prisoner camp is a billion years back in the future or sorry back in the past so the main character of this book whose name is Jim Barrett was involved in the revolution the underground people who were working against the government and he's picked up one day and sent back in time because he's a political prisoner and in this universe time travel is one way so he is working with this group at this place called Hawksville Station it's just all these prisoners who have been sent back a billion years trying to make the best of their situation so this book is uh the chapters alternate between Jim Barrett's memories of what he calls upfront, that's the modern time, and then him making the best of the situation and his leadership position in Hawksville Station a billion years in the past. I really enjoyed this book. It's short, it reads pretty quickly. I actually read it in one day. Um, and I, I think one thing that I'm seeing, but maybe I shouldn't be surprised of from these Hugo Award winners and shortlisted finalists from so far back is how well the stories hold up which I guess I shouldn't be surprised they were called out as either the best novella or novel of the year or on the shortlisted um on the shortlist for finalists so clearly they're books that were recognized at the time as being very good so I don't know why I'm so surprised when I when the stories hold up I think the story uh holds up really really well in this book even though it was written in 1968 so I think you, as a modern reader you shouldn't be worried about that obviously some of the timing we're reading about big events that happened in 2005 or 1994 that I haven't come to pass um feels less like science fiction and more like alternate history at this point but I feel like that's just something you're gonna have to accept reading a book from 1968 that was supposed to be science fiction there are a couple things that I wanted to point out or just one big thing that I wanted to point out and this is uh, something else that I think is just a product of being written in the 1960s and I found this also with Roger Zelazny's Damnation Alley and that is I feel like the women are just written as props in the story they don't really have a lot of substance to them and also grown women are repeatedly referred to as girls for some reason um, unless they were supposed to be girls in which case there were grown men sleeping with girls which is very problematic but I think the author meant them to be women and I'm going to chalk this up as a product of the author being born probably much earlier in the 1900s and now writing books in the 1960s. Culture is just different, so I am giving him a little bit of a pass on this one just for that reason. But as a modern reader, it comes across a little jarring to see women written in that way. And you know, it's something that would definitely never fly today. If this book was written in like 2008, I would be coming down very hard. There is a woman in here whose name is Janet. She is Jim Barrett's love interest in the upfront or in the modern times. and Janet, there is no substance I feel like to Janet. She's involved in the revolution, in the underground, but she 
we never really hear anything about Janet. We don't know what she's up to. We don't really know what appeals, what Jim finds appealing in Janet. The only thing we really learn about Janet is that she loses weight and therefore is now more attractive to Jim. That is about the only thing that we can kind of glean from this entire thing. Also, Jim Barrett, after he loses Janet due to some events in the course of the story, um, is just kind of like picking up temporary, uh, not even really partners, he's just like hooking up with people, but he's inviting them over to his house so they can like do his laundry and clean his dishes, which is just passed over as like, this is normal. And none of these women or any of the other women mentioned in like the countercultural revolution underground group amount to anything. Like I said, they just kind of feel like pretty play things that are mostly mentioned for their willingness to sleep with anyone and everyone. And they're also always called girls, even though I'm assuming when these people are in their 30s as the story progresses, they're dealing with other people who are at least over the age of 18. So that was just a little weird. I found this also, um, I said this compares to Roger Zelazny's Damnation Alley. In that book, the main protagonist while driving from one end of the United States to the other to bring a cure, um, meets someone who I believe was referred to as a girl, even though I was pretty sure it was a woman. And she was just kind of like a prop. It was very, very strange and weird. And I was like, this probably wouldn't pass in 2023 as good writing, but I'm giving this kind of a pass in the sense that I know these people grew up in a different time where people were treated differently, where um, the rights of women weren't as, I guess, fully fleshed out or hadn't been for as long. So I'm gonna give them a slight pass on that. It's just something that I feel like shows the age of the book and is definitely just a, uh, kind of shows the mindset of the author a little bit, I think. I'm sure the author didn't mean anything, um, uh, didn't have mal intent with that, but it definitely shows kind of the age of it. So at this point, the only one from, the only book from the 1968 novella category that I haven't read is Star Pit, but I did receive my notification that that hold was in at the library. So I will have, at this point, almost, at this point, I've almost finished up the 1968 novella category, but I will very shortly have it finished up because the last book is in at the library. This 1968, so the winners in 1968 were Wear Search by Anne McCaffrey and Writers of the Purple Wage. And um, I have to say, I see Wear Search was good. Wear Search. Uh, to a modern reader, I feel like it felt kind of cliche, but I could see how it could be revolutionary in 1968. I did not like Riders of the Purple Wage. I thought Damnation Alley was better than Riders of the Purple Wage, even though Damnation Alley was a finalist. And I think Hawksville Station was better than Riders of the Purple Wage, even though this was only a finalist. I think if you're looking for a very interesting time to have a book, you can't really go wrong with this. I feel like this is a really good, really good story that holds up to time. I think there's some things that date the story and definitely show the way that society was run or viewed in 1968. So just be aware of that as a modern reader. Some things might seem a little, um, it might just not go over if it was written today, but I think you have to keep in mind when the book was written and understand that that's just how the author um, was viewing the world then. So just note that there are a few little things that dated, but the core story really holds up and it's worth reading and I'm glad I took the time to read it. So I would give this a four star. It was very, very enjoyable. I had a really good time um, reading it. So I think if you're looking for an enjoyable little novella, time travel, science fiction, interesting story, uh, maybe kind of view it as alternate history too at this point due to the timing, give this one a read. I think you're not going to regret it and uh, let me know what you think. If you have any thoughts on this or read anything else uh, by Robert Silverberg, I believe he has some other Hugo, so I'm going to be reading more by him. At least he had some other Hugo finalists, I believe. So I'll probably be reading more about him, but if you have any recommendations or any other thoughts on this book, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.